how do you know if you have hemochromatosis? Is there a blood test, genetic test? What do you have to do to figure this out? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're gonna look at some of the blood testing, genetic testing that confirm and tell you for sure whether or not you have hemochromatosis. There's different scenarios where you may have high iron, high, high markers in certain levels suggesting this. So we're gonna look at the specifics. If this is something that interests you and you wanna see more videos like it, click on the like button to get more videos like it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep getting these videos. Thank you for watching. All right, let's dig into it. So we want to look at how do you know if you have hemochromatosis? So we're going to look at some of the lab values that suggest you might have this, but first a little bit on what hemochromatosis is. So hemochromatosis is a genetic disorder of increased iron absorption. There are certain signs, uh, lab values, and, and things physically that one might see if they have this. Later stages, uh, you might see manifestations of this, like on the skin, for instance. There's also like a lot of different symptoms that one can have from this, but we're not going to get into all of the signs and symptoms. In this video, we're going to discuss some of the lab tests and the genetic tests that suggest and also confirm that you have hemochromatosis. So typically people are asking this question when they've already had some lab value, lab tests done and those values are suggesting, you know, that they might have this if Google did or something like that. And, you know, that came up as an option. And the things that come up in labs that may hint at this or suggest this are things like elevated red blood cells, elevated hemoglobin, elevated hematocrit, elevated serum iron, decreased total iron binding capacity, and elevated ferritin. Of course, there are a lot of things uh, other than hemochromatosis that can cause these lab values to be elevated or, or decreased. So I'm not going to go into all of the different scenarios here on, on what scenarios can make things go up or down other than hemochromatosis. I'll point out a few things. Uh, so elevated red blood cells, hemoglobin, and hematocrit is common to go up when you're on testosterone replacement therapy. So both males and females can have this issue come up. And then of course, elevated ferritin can also go up in people with autoimmune issues or just really sick or a lot of inflammation, ferritin can go up. All these tests that I just talked about, the one that raises the most suspicion for maybe having hemochromatosis is the ferritin, at least in the case that there is no increased uh, inflammation or auto known autoimmune issues. When it's above 300 in females, definitely uh, would be suspicious, maybe even a little bit lower. When it's above 500 for males, it would be suspicious too, maybe even a little bit lower. It really depends on the age of the person um, and what's going on with them. For example, like females aren't menstruating, so they're losing iron. If you have an iron that's above 300 and you're still menstruating, that is kind of a red flag, especially if there's no inflammation occurring. For males, it does tend to come up a little bit earlier because they're not losing blood on a regular basis. Still, just having these elevated numbers does not tell us you have hemochromatosis. You have to do more testing, more investigation to discover this. Iron saturation or serum transferrin saturation is the most sensitive and specific blood test that you can do for hemochromatosis. That means when you do this test and it comes out positive, you could be reassured that you probably, you know, it's high conviction that you have hemochromatosis. So what is a positive result? It's a percentage that you're looking for and it's different for males and females. So when it's above 40 to 45 for males, anything higher than that as well, that would be highly predictive of hemochromatosis. For females, anything above 35 to 40 would also be highly predictive of hemochromatosis. Remember, Remember, you may have the other blood tests that you're doing, like the ones that I mentioned above, could be normal and you can still have a high percentage of transferrin saturation and that also suggests that you're going to get hemochromatosis in the future because uh, the transferrin is the transport protein for iron. As the saturation on that protein increases, more of it gets transferred into storage, which is the ferritin protein. Ferritin levels then go up and increase as a result of that. Now, of course, we mentioned ferritin can go up for other reasons outside of saturation of the trans transportation of the iron. But ferritin serves as a way to safely hold and, and prevent the iron from causing free radical damage. And it's a safe way to store and release iron on an as needed basis. Because iron is toxic to cells when there's too much around, if, you ju if the iron was just freely fo floating around and all the tr transferrin carrier protein was fully saturated higher than, you know, those 
30 or 40 percent, you're more likely for the oxidative damage and damage to cells to occur. So the protein called ferritin is a way to protect the body against this oxidative damage. Once it starts, that iron starts building up higher and higher, that suggests that you're absorbing too much or consuming too much. Of course, you know, you could just be consuming too much and you have a high ferritin. When the transportation in that transferrin goes up above that 35 percent for females and 40 percent for males, that's how you know you're starting to get some increased absorption because that's the first sign or for first instance that there's increased absorption of the iron. Now, of course, there is genetic testing for hemochromatosis as well. As I mentioned, it's a, it is a genetic disorder of increased iron absorption. And this is also a very reliable way to understand uh, whether or not you have hemochromatosis, but it's also a way to understand how efficient your body is at absorbing iron and what your risks are for getting you know, iron, iron storage or iron over load issues. The main alteration that creates hemochromatosis is a alteration, a homozygous alteration in the C282Y gene. 100% of the time, if you have two copies of that, so homozygous means you got one from each parent, that means you're, you're likely going to get hemochromatosis. It also means that if you have a parent with hemochromatosis, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it because you do need two copies. Now, you will get one from that parent and it is going to increase your iron absorption, but it's not necessarily going to lead to iron overload. Other factors have to come into play, like other genetic alterations that also increase your iron absorption. Some of those you could just be heterozygous for. So if you had a heterozygous alteration for the C282Y plus the H63D, uh, that may create a problem as well. It may lead to hemochromatosis as well. So it really just depends on, you know, other things too, like your diet, whether or not you're male or female female could, in certain scenarios, even with just one of the C282Y alterations, also known as heterozygous, that could potentially lead to an iron overload as well. By and large, it's the C282Y that causes the increased iron absorption and hemochromatosis. There are some other combinations and things that one can have to, that creates this, but that's the main one. A secondary one would be the HFE H63D uh, as well can do that. So if you do have problems with your blood work or family history, History or some genetics that suggest this, make sure you get tested for that transferrin saturation and see what your percentage of saturation for your transferrin protein is. If it's really high, that means it's something you're going to want to follow. Uh, if you have the genetics, you know, you may want to be testing this periodically because it can change over time as well. Okay, hopefully that explains how do you know if you have hemochromatosis. If you do have questions about any of the content that I mentioned here or just want to ask a follow-up question related to this or anything else, please drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that. I'll definitely try and answer your question uh, to the best of my knowledge. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.